I tweeted out a drawing from when I was eight years old where it was my biggest daydream. It's a picture of a big computer and it says, I want to have the biggest computer in the world. The idea with Foley at Home is that we want to perform simulations of protein dynamics. Proteins are the molecular machines that perform lots of the processes that we associate with life. Everything from muscle contraction to structural roles like your hair and catalyzing chemical reactions. And so we really want to understand all of these moving parts, but there's no experimental means to watch these proteins in action because of the size scale that we're talking about. And so our approach is to simulate them in a computer. And the reason that folding at home exists is these calculations are extremely computationally expensive. So even our easy problems would take like 100 years on a typical desktop computer. So what we've done is develop algorithms where we can split these enormous calculations up into lots of small chunks that can be performed in parallel, independent of one another, and then ask people around the world to volunteer to run these chunks of simulations on their personal computers for us. You don't have to have a really fast computer to participate in building a home. We can make use of everything people can give us. Building a home is estimated to be by far the largest supercomputer in the world. By one back the envelope calculation, we have more compute power than the top 100 supercomputers combined. And we're throwing as much of this as we can at COVID-19 and trying everything we can in parallel. At the end of February, we had about 30,000 active volunteers. Uh, in the past three weeks, though, we've had over 700,000 people join the project. So the idea is that experimentally, we can see a snapshot of what many of these proteins usually look like. Uh, but that still leaves us blind to lots of the moving parts that are important for their functions. It's as if you're trying to understand a football game but all you can see is what the players usually look like, which is them lined up at the line of scrimmage. So there's information there, but really you want to see the rest of the game as the process unfolds. And so that's what we're able to do with our simulations. So, so just to give one example, we've been looking at a protein complex actually called the spike. Uh, there's many copies of this that decorate the surface of the virus. This actually consists of three proteins that kind of come together. And in order to infect a human cell, the end of this has to open up to reveal the interface that actually binds to a human cell and initiates infection. And so we'd like to see this process occur and actually see what the open state looks like with the atomic detail that we need to start doing things like designing therapeutics to target different structures along this whole range of motion. Uh, and it does really go like this. So, so it kind of reminded us of one of the Devagorgon monsters from the television series, Stranger Things. So we've, we've taken to calling it the COVID-19 Demogorgon. It doesn't have to. So, so when you install the software, you can tell us what fraction of your computer you, we can use. Uh, you can also set things so that the software only runs when your computer has been idle for a certain amount of time so that we're not using it all when, when you want to be using the machine. So this is a specific protein called beta-lactamase. Uh, it's involved in antibiotic resistance, so bacteria express it because it's really good at inactivating penicillin and related antibiotics. And what we can see about 23 seconds in is the spontaneous opening of this deep groove uh, that we call a cryptic pocket because it's absent in the, the starting structure where there's no groove. Uh, we've shown that this provides us with a, a novel handle to design small molecules to shut down the function of this protein. You know, I think one of the really exciting things about this is to see people really banding together to rally around a, a common goal. And one of the things that we have to offer to people is the legitimate opportunity to be part of trying to tackle this pandemic. And, uh, washing your hands and social distancing and all of this are extremely important, but I think it's still uh, gratifying to feel like you can proactively do something to deal with this crisis.